Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Surrounds Dazzle Physics. In today's session, guys, we're going to be talking about emission and absorption spectrums and explaining the physics behind them. Okay, let's get straight into it. Okay, so first things first, um, maybe you've seen these at school. The, so there are three different types right now. This one is like a rainbow. This one is called the continuous spectrum. So this is called the continuous spectrum. And then the next one you see underneath is going to be, this is going to be the emission spectrum. And then this one over here, which is like the rainbow, but has the black lines instead. So this one, the second one, the emission one, has most of it is black and there are colored lines over here. And the last one, this one's going to be the absorption spectrum. And as we can see, we've got the majority of the continuous spectrum, but we've got black lines here. In this video, I'm going to explain how we get all three of them, how we're going to get all three of them, the continuous, the emission and the absorption spectrum. How do we get all three? OK, so first of all, the continuous spectrum. So how do I get the continuous spectrum? Uh, we're going to do the following. So let's say I was to take white light. So we're going to have white light over here. So white light. And hopefully you can remember that white light consists of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. Yes, those are the colors inside white light. If you were to pass that light through a prism, yes, a prism, so you pass it through a prism. So what happens is the white light is going to be dispersed and yes, and will separate. And what will happen is you will end up with this, the spectrum being uh, observed here. Because all the colors that come in, Richard of York gave battle in vain, all of them come in, they enter the prism, then obviously they separate, and therefore you get this rainbow pattern being formed. So the continuous spectrum is really easy. You just have white light going into a prism and it separates out and therefore you have all the colors like this. The function of the prism is to separate them out because notice if you don't have the prism, it still looks like white light. You need to have the prism to separate out the colors. So that's how we get the continuous spectrum. So what exactly is the emission spectrum? Let's talk about it. Okay, so how do I get the emission spectrum? Well, let's start off with this. We're not gonna have white light going into a prism, but let's say we have uh, a gas, hydrogen gas over here. So this is gonna be hydrogen gas over here. Hydrogen gas over here. Right, um, if you've forgotten um, hydrogen gas, let's talk about it in terms of the energy levels. So here is the Bohr's model of the atom. Hopefully you remember that. Um, it's got energy levels over here. Um, initially, if it's going to be cold, Yes, uh, the electrons are in the ground state. The electrons are in the ground state here. So what happens if we were to heat up the gas? Well, hopefully you can remember that if we were to heat up the gas, the electrons are promoted to a higher energy level. One, two, three. So the electrons are promoted upwards. So if it's a hot gas, so if we have a hot gas, the electrons have been, they gain energy. They are therefore excited to a higher energy level and they're at the top over here. Right, from here we know that the electrons will de-excite, they will drop back down to the ground state. So this electron drops down to here, this electron will drop down to the ground state, and this one dropping down to the ground state over here. Right, now don't forget, when electrons drop down, one, two, three, to a lower energy level, what happens is they will release photons. Yes, they release photons of uh, light coming out. So this electron dropping down over here, will release uh, a photon and just color it in. So this is the photon of light coming out. This one will correspond to maybe uh, this photon over here. And then the red one will be coming out over here. So each one of these uh, transitions will release a photon. Notice that uh, the greater the change in energy, yes, because uh, this one over here has the greatest change of energy, hence why the energy of the photon is going to be the highest. Because the Difference in the energy levels is going to be proportional to the frequency of the photon being emitted. So hopefully you have an idea that delta E is equal to HF. Right, and don't forget guys that, um, look, blue light has a higher frequency than the red light. So if we were to just, let's put that down over here. Richard of York gave battle in vain. If you've forgotten, longest wavelength over here, shortest one over here. Hence why the greater the drop, the greater the frequency of the photon emitted. That's why we have this. Delta E is equal to HF. So we've got one, two, and three over here. So hot gas right now, we've heated up the gas. The electrons gain energy. They get promoted to a higher energy level. Then they de-excite back down to the ground state, releasing photons. So these photons are coming out. Notice you're not getting all the photons. All the colors are not coming out. So we are missing loads of colors here. Over here, I've only drawn three. I've, we said that a red photon comes out, a green photon comes out, and a, let's say a violet photon comes out over here. So one, two, and three. 
That's the reason why we get these three. So we're not getting all the colors, we're just getting these three. So we have the hot gas over here, we heat it up, the light comes out, so uh, I'll just draw, draw it over here. So from the hot gas, we know that a red goes in, comes out, we know a green comes out, and let's just change this one to a violet one over here, over here. So these three colors come out. Over here, it's emitted photons, emitted photons are coming out. And then don't forget, so now you need to separate them out. So if we were to pass it through a prism, we will therefore obviously separate them out. So what happens is you end up with the following. You end up with this spectrum because majority of it is going to be black except for the colors which are coming out. So look, the red one ends up being over there. This is the red one that comes out. The green one ends up being over here and the blue one ends up being over here as well. So obviously you see none of the colors except for the colors of the photons being emitted. So look, you get black and the lines over here, these emission lines correspond to each of the electron transitions. So look, we have the red, we have the green and we have the blue over here. We have the red and green and blue. Right, okay, and look, this it acts like a fingerprint. So this is like a fingerprint. The reason why it's like a fingerprint of the gas is because don't forget every single gas will have its energy levels at different positions and therefore you'll get different electrons dropping down. So this will correspond to let's say hydrogen in this case over here. So it's like a fingerprint of the gas. So if you were to do the same thing, if you were to heat up let's say helium, you'll get a different emission spectrum. So every single gas, if you were to heat it up, you will obtain its own emission spectrum. But the key thing in this process is to be able to explain the whole thing. So number one, if you have a hot gas, electrons are promoted to a higher energy level. Yes, then they drop back down to the ground state, releasing those photons. The photons then pass through a prism. Then they separate out into the emission spectrum over here because you get most of it black except for colored lines to show you the photons which are emitted. Okay, I'll put it all down. All right, so here it is. So look, when the gas is heated, electrons are promoted to a higher energy levels. So the electrons are promoted to higher energy levels. The electrons de-excite back down to the ground state, releasing uh, photons of energy corresponding to the energy level difference of the transition, delta E. The greater the drop, the greater the frequency of the photon emitted. Yes, because obviously E is equal to HF. These photons are then passed through a prism and therefore separated. Hence, we obtain a spectrum which is majority black, but with colored lines representing the photons which were emitted. So the majority of it's going to be black, but these correspond to the photons emitted from the gas. Fantastic stuff. Okay, so this was for an emission spectrum. What about for the absorption spectrum? Let's discuss it. Okay, so the absorption spectrum. How on earth does the absorption spectrum work? How does the absorption spectrum work over here? Well, first of all, look, look at this. The emission one looks like this, the absorption one looks like this, for the same gas. It's almost like the inverse of the previous one. How do we get the inverse one? Right, so to obtain the absorption spectrum, we're going to do the following. We're going to take a cold gas, notice it's cold, yes, it, previously for the emission one it was a hot gas, it's a cold gas now, and we're going to shine white light into it. White light is going to go in. Right, okay, so now, how are we gonna explain this? How are we gonna explain this? Well, first of all, let's talk about white light. Okay, so over here, look, white light is made up of all the colors. Richard of York gave battle in vain. So put all those photons, white light is gonna bring all those photons in. And then in the cold gas, hopefully you can remember that. Don't forget Bohr's model of the atom over here. Uh, there we go, let's draw a couple of energy levels. And because the gas is cold, so don't forget the cold gas, the electrons are at the bottom, the electrons are at the bottom. Right, so the electrons are in the ground state. Now, we also know that electrons can move up at energy level if they gain energy equal to the energy difference. So um, that means that this red photon can come in and this electron can absorb the red photon and move upwards over here. There we go, this electron has now been moved upwards because the energy of this photon is equal to the energy difference of that gap. So the red photon comes in, it is absorbed by this electron, it goes upwards. The next one over here, this one going over here, don't forget, uh, this one has a bigger jump, so therefore it needs a photon of higher frequency. So let's say it's going to be green over here. Whoops, let's change that one to green. The green photon is absorbed by this electron causing this transition. Another one, let's go the violet one over here. So this one going all the way up. So look, the violet one over here is going to go over here. Right, so now look, um, 
some of the photons have been absorbed, not all of them. So therefore, the ones which didn't get absorbed can pass right through. So which ones didn't get absorbed? So orange continues to go through. Yes, orange continues to go through. Uh, the yellow continues to go through. So the orange, the yellow, and the green one was absorbed. So obviously it doesn't come out. The blue therefore comes out over here. And therefore, uh, the next one, uh, we also have the indigo also coming out here. Right, so now from here, the photons which actually pass straight through and which were not absorbed are then passed through a prism. We pass them through a prism and therefore, look, you end up with the continuous spectrum, but obviously you've got some of the photons missing. And obviously these are the photons which were absorbed. So this one is the red photon which is absorbed. This one was the green photon which was absorbed. And there, and this one over here, this one's going to be the violet photon over here. There we go. So look, we can see that um, the reason how we get the absorption spectrum is because the black lines indicate the photons which are absorbed by the gas. Yes. And we get all the other colors because they just pass through. They were not absorbed here. Right, and I'm just going to finish off this diagram over here. White light goes into a cold gas then passing it through a prism, and therefore you end up with the absorption spectrum. And that is it. And look, you can see that it's the same as the emission spectrum. The emission spectrum is majority of it black, you've got colored lines, but the absorption spectrum is, look, all the colors, but the black lines represent the photons which have been absorbed. So look, one, two, three. And once again, it's still a fingerprint of the gas because each gas will have its own energy levels and therefore will each have its own spectral pattern over here. Similar to the absorption one, just a bit different, yes, because this time we are shining white light into it. Right, so let's write out this one as well. And here it is, guys. Look, the absorption spectra. So number one, white light is shone into a cold gas. Electrons in the ground state absorb the photons with energy equal to the energy difference between the levels and are promoted upwards. Yes, so obviously this one absorbed uh, the red one, and this one absorbed the green one, this one absorbed the violet one. Don't forget, the bigger the energy difference, the greater the frequency it needs to be of that photon. The photons which are not absorbed pass through the gas and therefore are separated by the prism. Good. And then hence we get the following. So they all separate out. So you see all the colors which were obviously um, not absorbed, but the colors which were absorbed are indicated via the black lines over here. All right, so hopefully you can see that it's like the emission spectrum, but this one, white light goes in, but the emission spectrum is just electrons dropping down and photons being released here, but it's slightly different. But both of them are give you the same fingerprint for the gas here. So obviously every single gas will have its own emission and absorption spectrum, and now you should be able to explain how we obtain both of them. And that's it for another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going, and good luck in your studies. Ciao, ciao, and goodbye.